Hello there, and welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. In this one, we're going to go into the second session of our first Viceroy difficulty game. So, in the last episode, we have opened up a Danger Glade, set up a small town center, opened up a second Danger Glade, and by the end of the second episode, we have bought up some oil from our good old pal Zorg who happened to be able to help us with their, with that quest. I just wanted to point out one thing that uh, kind of got lost at the uh, epilogue of the last uh, episode. So uh, when I was buying oil from that dude, when you want to buy fuel to resolve quests, always make sure to turn it off at the hearth before you do so. Really, really important heads up. Because what was happening there, I was uh, I bought exactly 30 units and our super smart people here have picked up one unit of oil to make the fire go burn and uh, then we only had 29 this event exactly needs 30 you get the idea just wanted to p point that out it's really important that you over buy a bit and you control that as good as possible with fuel you can control it here and later down the road you can also unlock consumption control so you could also forbid the food or something like that over the screen. I'm going to show that once we have it unlocked though. So for this episode we're going to try to get ourselves as close as possible to the victory and let's see how good we can manage. As usual I'll explain as much as possible on the way and uh, we're going to start on out with resolving this uh, little event here. As a quick heads up uh, pointer towards the playlist link in the description box so if you're uh, new to this one here you might want to check out this from the first episode on where we explain where you can see everything explained in detail in the first part uh, playthrough and a quick pointer to the links to support this channel there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee as ways and means to support this channel and since i got no big sponsorships or anything behind me i'd be really delighted if you'd give them a look and a big thanks to all the supporters out there. I deeply appreciate it. So we got all this running here. And most importantly, we have a farm now. But there's no use in manning that farm this year. Because the cycle is like that. Drizzle, we plant out the seed. Clearance, we get in the seed. Storm, we plow the fields. And uh, if you don't have it uh, running... well. <laughs> The workers here wouldn't do anything, so we can. We might as well just leave it like that. All right, so new orders pop up, but I'm actually not really that interested in picking up any new orders right now. What I'm interested in is to survive the event. We've picked a huge uh, treasure pile here. The brick will serve as well. The crystallized dew, we can transform that into tools. The ancient tablets, those are super valuable trade goods and a perk which allows us to make glade events go poof even faster pretty good stuff really important we right now have two workers free so we better do something with these because there's uh you know i don't like idle hands so let's set up new pathways that's one thing you can always do and uh moving away the scavenger camp here and uh expanding the pathways up towards here too because by the end of the day, we're definitely going to set up a new logistics up here, too. This looks like a really good spot for our second hearth, I'd say. So, let's do this. Small hearth, yeah. We can set it up here. And we set up right next to that a another warehouse. This is very important because the hearth needs permanently uh, needs to be fueled permanently and therefore it's really cool to have a warehouse right next to that and besides that every worker up here who's collecting stuff like that will have a shorter route to drop off their stuff and by any time you don't need the warehouses anymore you can also delete them it's pretty cool so all in all they are not that much of a big investment so last episode i allowed my people to make packs of crops i forgot to check mark them we're going to craft them now for the next quest the rich harvest one and now let's check out what we can draft here 
So I'm very interested in the Weaver because fabric is really awesome. Also, a place to craft trade goods at is really, really cool. The Clothier, well, the Clothier is pretty not... It's, it isn't really worth it without some place to craft fabric at first, so we take it in this order. And here, well, this is pretty uh, a pretty hard decision. We're either uh, going for the cookhouse, because we can go and make complex food there, or we go for the carpenter, because we can make simple tools there. I'm going for the carpenter, because I want those simple tools ASAP. Um... The decision here is really a matter of playstyle. If you like to win via Glade events harder, go for tools first. If you like to win via um, Resolve and Happy People harder, the Cookhouse would have been the better choice. So it's really a, a thing of the playstyle here. And that's generally something with, with the against the storm this game really reflects your playstyle a lot there's a lot of different options to solve the problem so here i'm going to draft uh, the order for luxury goods we just picked up a building which can make luxury goods and we gain better flower production some amber some newcomers pretty good stuff so let's go where we set up the carpenter's workshop here and i definitely want the provisioner now too and I want the Weaver too. So we're we're going now wild with those workshops. I'm paying close attention to string up these workshops in the vicinity of the warehouse. And now, on top of that, the vicinity to the Blight Post is also quite important. You always should try to string up your entire manufactories from this difficulty level on upwards roughly in the vicinity of a blight post. If that ain't possible for some reason, you can build a hydrant, and uh, then you have some stockpile for purging fire, but I never really use those. It never uh, was necessary. So, next storm season's upcoming. Always, uh, I personally always try to uh, wait into the storm season and see how far I'll get. In this scenario, we always have to pay attention, though, to have the um, the hostility level never above seven before the storm starts. That's really important. So here we have one low resolve on the lizards, but except for that, everybody's happy. So we can now do different things. So for one, we have two idle lizards, and lizards love warm workplaces. So let's see what happens when we put them in there. Check this out. They're all of a sudden happy. Sure, we don't have any workers anymore left to uh, do anything, but nobody's freaking out either. So we're going to reduce our woodcutters a little bit, I'd say. Just like that. Just to make sure we have one constructor again. I always like to have one constructor at the very least running. And uh, here you see there's not much happening the blight fighters well we have way too many of them but uh, they're killing off the the corruption that has spawned on the workshop here there's another thing worth mentioning about corruption i'm going to showcase that in a sec so uh, when you have corruption high enough on a workshop the first thing doesn't do anything, it just spawns corruption. The second thing makes people work faster, and the third thing even gives a chance to double the production. These bonuses apply only during the storm season, and you can also forbid the burning of the cysts during the storm. Generally, you can afford up to two workshops completely corrupted without blasting anybody. So you can use that proactively as a uh, strategy to, well, speed up certain workshops. But do that with care, since it is a pretty risky strategy. Up there, our next hearth has been completed. So let's uh, drop another lizard in there and make it happy. So now we have a second area there. And that means we're going to repeat our same procedure. We're putting up some barrels there. And now we can fast forward for the remainder of the storm, so... There's not really much we need to do now. Except for waiting the... 
for the end of the storm. And here we have now the rich harvest uh, thingy going on. We have our first packs of crops completed. So let's let's turn that in. Never hurts. And let's get on over to the makeshift post. So I need now only three packs of crops for the for the other quest. So let's make that happen here. I like to limit the production of these inefficient workshops as hard as possible because you know they are wasting materials, and I only produce as much as possible. So woodcutter's prayer versus blight extractor. So well, <laughs> here we have to pick. Uh, we would get some amber from blight rot cysts if we completely let them infect the building. I don't want that. And woodcutter's prayer would be a plus one to my wood production, but I'd need to lose all stored fuel when I pick that, and I'm at a no thanks point. So I'm picking up a cornerstone I don't want to. During the early phase of the game, this will happen more often to you due to the simple reason that you don't have any rerolls and you don't have any perks to enhance the selection of your cornerstones. In the upcoming episodes, we will become better at drafting cornerstones that are valuable for us. At the beginning of the game, you just have to endure. Now then, here I'm picking the tools. You know, tools are just that powerful, so I'm sold right on now we need more housing and i'm putting up that housing now over at the new hearth the thing is the hearth here requires a certain amount of uh denizens to uh get that uh hub upgrade i want to make that happen and also i want to have fully manned woodcutters you know that's the least we can do and another important thing, we could have done that already during the storm season, but I was a little bit low on hands. The small farm has to be manned now. So, we still have four workers left there. That's quite a lot. The blight post is totally fine with just one worker. I'm going to leave the numbers like that because I had quite a lot of building projects, so we're, we're fine with letting them uh, roll for a moment there. Another thing I did notice there we could use some new collector's camps, but I'm low on parts to realize that. Let's see what kind of blueprint we get there and check this out. We get the cookhouse another time. As much as I would love to have a uh, steady production of bricks, here I'm opting for that. I'm personally quite often willing to go for two of three of these materials. To grab something like the cookhouse now because the cookhouse is really really a big power up for our colony once we have that complex food becomes available once complex food becomes available not only do you have a steady food income your people are much much happier and happier people mean more resolve more resolve means reputation via resolve means winning harder so it's all in all a totally uh, profitable um, situation so we got our first uh, better building up here or I should rather say my second and here things uh, become a little bit more complicated so the provisioner ain't important as of yet I just have him the carpenter though it is really important Important enough, actually, to release the beaver out of his woodcutting services to put him in here. Because he has also a chance to have double yields on what you're producing here. And I can tell you, this is really darned appealing to, to have that. So, here we're going to uh, go for something like that. I'm going to release two beavers from their services as woodcutters, actually. We don't need a uh, massive wood income at this point anymore. So we have now two beavers, and I set up the importance for tools a little bit higher. I let these guys here produce still planks at a uh, crappy... Um, at a crappy... efficiency, but that's okay, because I personally think crafting tools right now is way more important because that gives us really really a big boost ahead so here we also need the three packs quests let's do that so pack of provisions let's check out what we can give we got a nice supply of eggs so let's do this four 
and packs of building materials. We're going to uh, create them out of uh, planks here, because planks, we, we got a lot of wood in this colony, so we should be okay with giving planks. Here at this point, we're at a very, very chaotic phase, because we have a lot of things going on at, uh, at the same time. Let's order some, uh, let's open some orders. Welcome new people versus luxury. Well, that's uh, really, really sucky. I'm going to try that. It's, it's a luck-based thing. And uh, here we go. Oh yeah, trade goods and building materials. We could do that as well. I don't want to go for a tavern draft and uh, ale. This is something I can't fulfill. Like I keep saying, go for the orders that, where you can clearly see that they are doable. There's nothing worse than an order hanging out in your tab that never gets done. So, just my personal opinion. Okay, so as we see there, our farm is uh, doing its job great. Can, oh, can expand that a tiny bit dead. And for now, we have still two workers left. That's two workers too many, in my opinion. So let's uh, put them up in the carpenter's workshop. And, uh, well, I'd say I'm going to release the, the priority here for once. Because our buildings are delayed by a lack of planks. So let's make sure the other buildings get done too. There we go. So... Now we got the weaver as well. Let's put somebody in there. And here I'm disabling all the other uh, jobs right away because they're really not appealing. And what I'm also doing here, I'm disabling fabric here right away too. Because the fabric production here is so highly inefficient, I don't want that. It's wasting fabric uh, or plant uh, fibers. And we really don't want that. No, no. We're going to create all our stuff here at the Weaver's place. That's the place to to be right now for, for these things. Okay, so the only thing missing are now the packs of building materials. We're surely going to get there. And hello, Sahilda. So here, really good news, Sahilda is here. So we're going to buy ourselves those planks. Yes, all of them, please. And let's see what else. I am going to pick on up the herbs. They're really useful. I'm going to pick up nothing else. So we're going to, to pay this time with tablets. And as you see there, these things are really, really darn valuable. You can, you can really make a nice profit with that. So we're able to buy ourselves even some stuff more. So, well, what then? Well, let's let's balance that out with Amber. Let's do this. And uh, here, last few bits. I'm going to pick up wood with that because wood is one of the cheapest goods, making it a really good thing to uh, to flatten out builds. All right. So we do have enough Amber open for another perk, and I'm going to buy a uh, a, a fabric plus production part. These are really, really valuable things because what it uh, directly does, you see, we're now creating three units of fabric per production cycle instead of just two. And that really does make a pretty big difference. So another order came in. We can now go for an aesthetics uh, decorations goal or for ale. Here, the same thing. You would need a building that, a service building that offers leisure and you would need ale to fulfill that service versus we're splatting down 20 decorations and get a big reward for that. I know what I do want to take, especially since this is again metal reward. Metal rewards are awesome because they give you the tools you need to get, uh, to get forward, you know. So here we got yet again another um, deficit with uh, more copper bars. <laughs> so... We're going to open up one of these caches pretty soon, but not now. We're producing tools now. That means we are at a pretty good spot to uh, to get us somewhere. So we got a cook house now. And, you know, the cook house is the lizard house. 
they can have a one place there. So we also got the ability to make ourselves biscuits now. That's pretty cool because now we have a usage for flour and skewers. So skewers are really, really tasty, but we're lacking a lot of materials here to get the job done. I'm disabling the uh, pigments right away because that's just, uh, you know, that's just a no-no. All right. Foragers camp doesn't have any jobs anymore. We're releasing them and delete that camp and uh, rebuild a stonecutter's camp right away so we can access that. I, delete, I deleted the old camp because I know that I'm running out of parts. So one thing that becomes pretty clear now is that we're also suffering a bit of a shortage for food. So let's bring up the provisioner here. And flour, well, I limit that to 100 because there's no use to uh, mill away all that grain. And it's storm season again. So here again, the lizards are the only in our, in our village there who have a bit of a problem. So we're going to exchange that. One lizard was woodcutting and that lizard is now going to receive a uh, job at the cookhouse. But uh, as you see there, it's still not enough. Oh, yeah, here we have one more lizard that we can put up into another job there. Let's put him here into that place. Still not quite enough. Here's another nice trick about the lizards. The lizards are one species who's losing its resolve quite slowly. As you might notice, they are not really... Uh, the number here is not really drawing drop in fast so you have quite some time available another thing here though that's really a problem now we are we ran out of uh, collectible camps so let's do something about that we're uh, going to demolish the scavengers camp also and we're going to see which glade we're going to open next yeah this one's looking good so I'm going to set on up a, uh, a woodcutter here to work there, but under no circumstances we open that during the storm because we have a debuff which would give us a nasty uh, resolve um, penalty if we'd opened up that now. There's really no reason to take that. And here I'm just sitting it out. The lizards had enough uh, positive resolve to just, uh, to just chill for that. They, they don't really sweat it, you know. Let's uh, put up more stone cutters in there. And before the storm's over, they even get a bonus here. Um, that's, I guess, because the skewers are just so tasty. They love skewers, so they get now bonus resolve from that. Complex food, my friends. Complex food. That's just a very, very powerful tool. Wonderful. There's one party offering parts. That's what we're needing. Because I'm really, I, I really ran out of these a little bit. But uh, that's that's not a problem. You just need to keep an eye out for these. New cornerstone delivery. So here, gain two amber for every 20 sea marrow produce versus ancient tablets for glade events. So I get those re retroactively, so I'm going to pick that. So we gained now another tablet out of that. I do like it. It ain't bad. So holding down shift here to mark one tree and give them the permittance to chop it up. So we're going to set on up some shelters here too. And the three packs quest is now fulfillable. Let's do this. So what happened here is really awesome. We have now two bonuses on fabric production. So we have now actually double the production. And this place has now also an extra grain production. So we're really, really good at this by now. And we got ourselves a new blueprint. So let's check it out. I will pick up... Well, I'm really tempted. But we're going to pick up the clothier. The bakery would be awesome too. Because, you know, we, the pie would be really good. We have one building for biscuits already, but no. The coats at the clothiers are really, really good. Because beavers and humans alike... They love to have coats, and that makes them happier again. It's really important to have uh, all those uh, mood boosters to, uh, to amp up the power of your uh, 
of your setup. So another new glade has been opened up. We have big root deposits. That's really good. The dewberry bushes we sadly cannot uh, pick, pick up. But we're going to set on up a new scavenger camp there. And uh, we're going to pick up another warehouse. Just uh, shift it. Press left shift with the cursor over that to pick up a copy. And here we have another hidden trader cemetery. So this event is sadly, <laughs> I don't have the resin right now to resolve it. Well, it doesn't matter. We're, we're just going to pick up the coal. There's so many different ways to resolve that. You could also use tools, but I don't want to. So we're going to send that over to the queen. These rewards would be all quite nice and all. But none of these are like, oh yeah, I need that. And if that happens, it's usually a good idea to just send that to the Citadel. The event here is giving us a uh, stacking penalty for uh, on the hostility of this region. So we got to handle that with care and fast as fast as possible. All right, so uh, we got new shelters. So, and now we are lacking two people uh, here. So one trick I love to do is I'm picking up a shelter here. This, cost, this will cost you five wood, but this is really something we can't afford. And we just uh, move these people over there and then we get the new bonus. And check out our lizards. They're happy enough to churn up resolve. Wonderful. So here we're now doing the next uh, event. And as you see there, Things are going on really, really well here, but there's one really, really big problem right now. Our food situation is not stable, not at all. We still have no constant income of, uh, of the materials we require for the foodstuffs because we, yeah, well, we can make biscuits now, but we need more flour. We, we do make that now, so we're, we're slowly getting there. But all in all, well, our food situation ain't stable yet. That's the last bit that we have to tackle, but it's still a bit that we have to tackle, you know. So let's uh, get another woodcutter out there because, you know, we, we do have enough wood for the moment. But you see, the wood stockpiles are actually dwindling. That's mostly because the, the carpenter is eating uh, wood like crazy. That's just the thing that carpenter shops have have on them, but uh, that's okay for the moment. That's for me perfectly okay for the moment, but it is something we should better monitor for for our own good. So next uh, thingy here getting completed, and we should now definitely aim for some of these quests. So. 8 for the beaver clan, 12 packs of building materials. So I'm pressing now left control to check on out if I have any workshop capable of doing the building material packs better. I don't see any here. Let's see if my selection's there. No. So we gotta bite the bullet and uh, allow them to make these uh, that dozen here. That really hurts, because as you see there, we're using 10 planks per production cycle. That's uh, hilariously uh, bad in terms of efficiency, but what can we do? We gotta do what we gotta do. Alright, so I'm also going to set on up the 20 aesthetics uh, decorations. That's quite a joke, because we now have to uh, invest into 20 useless uh, items there. They really don't do anything. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So that's, give me a sec, that's uh, 16. I mean, the weirdness behind all that is we can't even delete them afterwards and get the resources back. I, I, I think the de developers really need to rethink that bit. So here we finally got the brickyard. I'm still not picking it up because the rain mill can offer building materials and we need to build a darn lot of building a darn lot of building materials in this run. 
So let's uh, pick this up right there. And that woodcutter scam can work here as well. And I forgot to forbid the glade opening here. Okay, so we are on a really, really good way. If the tile wouldn't forbid it right now, I would uh, give the lizards a lighter treatment to make them churn out even more happiness. But that's not an option right now, sadly. But it ain't too much of an issue. So, well, we're, we're really going to get there. The clothier now, we should definitely put a second dude in there. Because the, the coats are really awesome. They make everybody here happier. Every little layer of, uh, of, of services we can slap up there is increasing the happiness even a little bit more. And that's just outright good for us. So, this quest is getting somewhere too. And the next storm is upon us. So, uh, we are low on fuel, it says. So, in, under these circumstances, it is a wise choice to just shut down the carpenter for a while and uh, dump the wood back into the stockpiles. Same goes here. The uh, blight post also happens to have a lot, quite a lot of these materials too, so you usually ha can have some uh, relief there. So, we're going to go into the next storm, and uh, meanwhile, well, it is not like we need to be uh, deadly worried about that. So we have another low lizard resolve. So again, we're going to put them somewhere warm. And usually that's uh, helping out enough. They got 14 resolve to cool down from. So that's uh, really not that much of a big deal. So, <laughs> well, more danger glade events. Certainly not gonna happen. We're going to take pie and biscuits. Also, another really nice trick that we can apply here. We're going to move our stone cutters to that uh, to that uh, sea marrow deficit, so they can uh, carve out some sea marrow. This will provide us uh, some fuel for the upcoming storm. That'll surely help. So, another important thing: we now have done the last pack of uh, building materials. Let's deactivate them right away so we don't uh, kill our performance here anymore. Okay, so I'd say that's a good point to end today's episode. I feel like we really, really achieved something, and I'm quite positive that we might even achieve victory in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. We're going to get through the next episode together, and uh, feel free to drop me a comment down below, leave me a thumbs up, and also... I'd be delighted to have more subscribers because I'm doing daily content like that and if you hit that bell thing, you'd get notified whenever something new happens. Also, check out the playlist down there. Like I said in the beginning, I'd be really, really happy about any clicks on the support links because this is just the coolest way to say thanks for the content. Anyways, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Stay awesome. Enjoy gaming, and see you soon.